Hello, all my EPs. Y'all ready to check out this spooky e-bike? <laughs> all right, let's crack this pig. Let's get some lights on. <laughs> oh, man. I got this bike on Tuesday, and I am stoked. I have been so waiting to open this thing up. Let's get some lights happening. All right. And that light right up there. Damn. Okay. So I did actually pull out all these copper staples, make it a little bit easier and quicker to get into. And somebody left guts and appendages all over our bike here. Oh, <laughs> my wheel took care of it. There she is. All right. So, I did take a tiny peek. I do know that this isn't packaged like the OG H6, like encased in foam. It's packaged more like the X3 was. It's just kind of in there. So, we'll be cutting some zip ties, I think. And I highly recommend that you meet your UPS driver at the door with a dolly, because this is well over 100 pounds. This particular box came with things, no dents, and it is perfect. The last bike was a pre-production model, and that box was all duct taped together. Oh, there she is. Holy crap, look at that battery. Let's get you all down here a little bit. Do -do -do. All right, so oh, first up. things first, let's get the wheel out of here. Look at those rotors. So I believe these are 204 mil, let's see, two mil thick. Oh man, they're gorgeous. So that's going to accompany some four piston caliper brakes. Oh, hydraulic, of course. And get our handy clippers here. This is in here really good. I'm not seeing any kind of damage. Lots of zip ties. Now, if I was doing this with my own accord, not on video, I would clip these zip ties nice and carefully so they could be reused. But we're just going for it here, man. We're going to rock tonight. Can you help with that I probably will. There's going to be a lot. I'll yeah. probably uh, be filling up a dumpster. All right. So, check out these mags. That's our front wheel. And these tires are way different than the Kendas that came on the previous H6. They're kind of a tread pattern along the side. Still 20 inch, still 4 inch. BFTs. So these are not Kendra. But boy, they're cool. They're really cool. Man, that's beautiful. And normally if I have the choice, I'm going to go with spokes on my bike for off-roading. Um, spokes are just better for off-road. You get a little crazy on these, you can crack a mag. But dang, they're beautiful. They're powder-coated. Had a textured finish. Oh man. I wish y'all could smell this. This is a rubber. But if you're watching this, you're probably going to be ordering one soon, so you'll get to smell it too. Same fenders as the OG. Um, they're plastic. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, plastic fenders, but they're lighter, they're quieter, and uh, they can take a pounding. Let me tell them what's in here. And the metal, the dumps are like kind of pounded. Well, the plastic, not as much. Well, the metal ones are loud, and they're rattly, and they yeah. get dinged. And that's your rear seat. I'm actually going to 
attempt to figure out a way to put pegs on the rear of this bike so that he can go for a ride with me. I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> so we're going to have uh, probably pedals in here because it's pretty heavy and tools in here. We're going to have a charger. Anthony 786 says, I already got mine and I've been writing it the past few days. Oh man. Do you like it though? Are you loving it? it it's the same color as my other H6. Um, and I absolutely love that bike. That bike I actually bought from Walkie. I didn't get it free. And it is still my favorite because it's the one that I shot for and you know, I was online for weeks trying to find the right bike, and I landed on that one, and I never regretted it. I've always loved that bike. So this one, being the same color, with four piston brakes, 1,000 watt hub motor, 40 amp hour battery in the back. Um, I really doubt that there's going to be a battery in the down tube. Um, that's kind of thing you guys got to look out for is that they are actually selling these without that down tube battery. Okay. And that down tube battery, I want to say is in the five to $600 range. So if you want to get it up to that 54 to 60 amp hours, you're going to spend another couple of bucks, but 40 amp hours is nothing to sneeze at, man. So. Colton asks, will you review the H6ST Max? Uh, I would love to. Um, if Walkie sees fit to send me one, I would absolutely love to. Uh, from what I gather, it's pretty much the same bike. It's just the step through platform. Uh, you know, it's got the four piston brakes in the mags, and it has the three different trim levels. Uh, and honestly, I have been really enjoying this step through. First one that I got, it's just really casual to ride. You know, you can just kind of hop on it and uh, you don't have to swing your leg over the back. And the suspension is a little softer. It's made for you know, kind of easier going riding, um, which is kind of funny because I could jump it higher because of the suspension being so soft. Whenever I hit a hip, if I compress a little bit, I can get it much higher off the ground than the H6. So, so yes, I would love to. Uh, I really hope I'll be able to review that bike. Honestly, I'm kind of running out of room in the garage, <laughs> but uh, I'll always take another bike. We'll figure it out. We'll start hanging from the ceiling or something. I don't know. Colton says, I also think it has a 1,200-watt motor, too. Yeah. Um, when I was looking at that online, I didn't quite look that close because I just assumed it was basically the same as this, you know, just like another Max with three trim levels. And, yeah, I think it. I did see that the Max is a 1,200-watt motor that peaks at, like, 1,600 amps or something like that. And that's kind of a funny thing with these bikes. Like, uh, my old H6, um, I think it was rated at, it would like peak at like 1400 watts. But whenever I turned it on and got going and really started goosing it with a full charge, it was reading like 550 plus or 1550 plus. So I think they slightly underestimate that. It's, it's kind of an average thing because obviously as you drain the battery, you're peak wattage is going to go down a little bit, but it starts a little bit higher. So you're probably not going to actually get to the rating that they tell you until you're like down to 75% of your battery life. But it also depends on the wind, the terrain, your weight, uh, how much pressure you have in your tires, uh, just all that stuff, what PAS level you're at. So that's why it's so hard to, judge you know people are always asking me you know what's your range on that thing it's like well it depends on if it's a windy day depends on uh how i'm feeling how i'm cranking it <laughs> you know if i'm taking it easy i can go a lot farther okay a couple more here 
So anything I tell you is going to be wrong, you know. All right. I think I got everything disconnected. Let's tip this guy up. Yeah, this handlebar is going to come with me. Now, guys, I am probably going to drop this a couple of times. And it looks like it's pretty heavy. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, forks are holding it up. So there it is. Can y'all see that? Freaking epic. That battery is nuts. I gotta dig out the keys so I can pop this thing out of here. Totally different locking mechanism. Yeah, it's locked in there. It's oh in man, that battery alone is probably pushing 20 pounds. <laughs> Colton asks. Does the H6 Max have an app? It does. So there are three different trim levels, and the Max is the one that comes with this guy here. So this particular display has an app, and it has a Find My Bike gig on it. I'm like, hey Siri, find my bike. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I should have probably downloaded that app. I couldn't find anything app. called bike set up and find my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Siri. You're pretty and I love you. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I didn't realize my iPad is over here. Oh my goodness. Anthony said that his is black. Yeah, um, I would have really loved to got the black one, especially since I have the, this is called matte gray. I've already got a matte gray bike. Um, I've also got a black bike back there too, but man, that black with the red, you just can't go wrong. Red on black, there's just something so awesome about that, man. The contrast is just so gorgeous. Right. Colton says LMAO. <laughs> Yeah, Siri calls me daddy. Okay, so you do actually have to have this stem down in order to insert the handlebars. Oh, that's a so when I put this together, another year six, that was actually last November, almost a year ago. So it's going to take me a minute to remember how to do all this. And there it is. Okay, so um, obviously a lot of us complained about the pogo stick style handlebars. And I can tell um, if I busted out the old ones from the original H6, they were a lot narrower. And that's what made them kind of lame. Also, you couldn't quite get them down as far as this. They were like way up here. So this whole neck assembly looks different. This is shorter. So this is going to get down a little bit further. That's going to be a lot more sporty. I might not have to swap those out right off the bat like I did the other one. So I'm really digging that. Also on this bike, compared to the old one, you're going to get a twist throttle. And that's going to take me some getting used to because I'm used to having a thumb throttle on this side. But having it... Uh, I didn't lock that in there. Having a twist throttle on this side is cool because when you're riding and signaling, you don't have to like let off your throttle and signal, you know. Um, when I'm standing up, it's kind of nice to have that button throttle, you know, so I'm just holding it down cruising. With this one, I'm going to have to kind of be doing that. I might actually put one of those palm grips on here so, I, you know, I can just kind of palm it. But man, that feels really good. Okay, Anthony said something funny. He said... Siri calls me daddy too. Is she cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. Um, Callie and the boys got me an iPad for Christmas one year. And they set it up as daddy's iPad. So ever since then, that was eight years ago or something. Ever since then, Siri has called me daddy on all my devices. <laughs> it's hilarious. All right, so I uh, grab those wire cutters. There's still a couple more zip ties on here. They really did pop a lot of this closed cell foam in key spots, which I'm really liking. 
And I'm pulling off a piece of foam on this side. Um, I'm going to recommend if you guys buy one of these, get yourself some of that Velcro neoprene, kind of like I had on my other H6. I did a video about it. And maybe cover your down tube on this side because with that springy derailleur, you get a lot of chain slap on that uh, rear control arm. And all three of those bikes have little chips in the paint on the rear control arm from that chain smacking. Of course, I ride like a lunatic, but you know. Okay, uh, instantly I am seeing TIG welds everywhere. So they didn't go quite as clean the whole CNC route like they did on the old bikes. I'm actually seeing welds. Oh, now, yeah, I can see on that body it's actually working. Yeah, you see how clean those are? The bodywork is all done. On this bike, we've got TIG welds everywhere. Um, they're good welds. I've seen better. Um, you know, they're good welds. They're going to hold, but um, it's kind of like a riding an old school mongoose. You know, you see all those sweet TIG mm -hmm. welds all over the place. So that doesn't uh, bother me too much. And this handle is totally different. It's a little bit slimmer. I mean, obviously it's not the same frame. They had to totally rebuild it. And this is a bike that was sent to me for review. So I can't say whether or not your bike is gonna come packed in foam like the old bikes, or if it's gonna come packed like this if your bike is going to have the finished body work or if we're going to see these uh, welds. I'm not entirely sure. I have to look at one of the pictures closer for one of the production models. I'm assuming that this is one of the production models because I got it the day they started shipping. Um, so we'll see about that. Um, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but... You know, that was one of the big things I loved about those bikes is the way the body works done. You can't see a single weld on those bikes. Anthony says it doesn't. It doesn't what? I'm guessing he's saying that it doesn't have the two Oh, his, your, your, the body work on all yours are clean? Okay. And that makes sense. When uh, these companies send out these bikes to guys like me to review them or do videos about them. We're not going to get the cream of the crop. We're usually getting like a pre-production model or something like that. There's actually another guy that did an unboxing of this bike, um, Fire and Ice Outdoors, something like that. And he got a bike um, that was probably a display model and uh, it had mileage on it. And he really poo-pooed the packaging. But what I didn't realize was that's not a bike that you're going to get if you actually buy it. You know, he, he got basically a bike that had been run through the ringer, you know. So he was really bumming out on the packaging, but that's not what an actual customer will get. And this, uh, Anthony is uh, the his, his exact same like yours. And we got it. 13 people watching, two likes. That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys. Um, would you do me a big favor? Did we do that all the lights on? Can y'all see okay? Let me know if you want me to do anything with the camera. I am really, this is my second time going live and I have zero ideas of the guy. Colton says the app is called a key disc for the bike, by the way. Excellent. Yeah, when we get into the instructions, I want to check that out. That's exciting. Um, I'm wondering if you're able to like go into the settings of the bike and things like that. Now, this is cool. Uh, one of my major issues with the older bikes was that half circle projector headlight on there. Um, the horn was decently loud, but as a headlight, it was pretty insufficient. This looks like it's going to do the job. And I'm assuming there's a horn in there as well. Seems like it. 
Yeah, that's three pins, so there's definitely a horn in there. Um, this is a really cool beefy bracket that's on there too. And so that little wire prong job, that's a nice chunk of hardware. That's awesome. So that's an upgrade, definitely. We will be putting that on momentarily. I was planning on actually putting this bike together with the tools it came with. Um, I do know that that front fender, that bolt on the front fork, that's a 10 mil. And in my experience, these bikes don't have 10 mils. So I do have one ready to go. I think you get a slightly better set of Allen wrenches. The new X3 Pros are coming with all head Allen wrenches, which is really nice, especially for this front fork. Okay, we have our owner's manual, and this is much thicker than my other one, and uh, a lot more detailed pictures. A lot of people had a problem with the old instructions because they were kind of planning on you just to go online and look it up but this looks a lot more thorough and they go into the display settings which is really nice like a lot like a whole lot there's a lot of information here this is dang it's a good manual i appreciate that and it is all in english it's not like you know half English and then half Spanish or half English and half Cantonese. It is all English. That is all usable manual. That's nice. I like that a lot. And then we have our charger. Now this thing is gorgeous. Look at that. Got a heat sink with a fan. That is beefy. Um, Huge charger. Yeah, and this uh, connector cable to the battery, it's like an XLR cable. If I can get it open, there we go. Yeah, it's a totally, <laughs> it's an XLR cable, kind of like you'd see on a microphone. So that is awesome. Let me see it, yep, boom. Man, that is a beefy sucker. Uh, this is a, uh, I thought it was a five amp hour, five amp. Yeah, it's five amp. So, um, it's probably going to charge the same amount of time it took to the other bikes to charge probably five to six hours because you got so much more battery, but this is, this is metal. This is aluminum. Um, this is a quality unit. That's awesome. Still on the topic of chargers, Anthony says the charger fan is pretty loud. Yeah, um, yeah, it's like either you have chargers with no fans that get really hot, or you have the chargers with the fans and they're super loud and noxious. Um, but that way you know it's working, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got our an 18 mil, so that's going to be for the rear wheel and ball head Allen wrenches. Thank you very much. So this is, again, an upgrade. Blind. This is much nicer than the set I got before. Let me show you that. So I used to send these out, and that's like not even Harbor Freight quality. These guys are ball head. That is awesome. It flips out. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going to put that in my bike bag. This one, I would just took out the ones that I wanted because the rest of them are kind of useless. Probably the same thing with this, but that is cool. I'm okay with that. And we'll need that for putting on the front fender and doing all the adjustments on the handlebars. And other than that, I don't think we're going to need Allen wrenches to actually put the bike together. Uh, here we have a 15 and a 13, so open and crescents, and then uh, an 18 box in. So that's all you get for tools. And then our pedals. 
And these are a little bit different than the old pedals. But I got, these are not walkie branded. Um, let me know if the ones you got are different from these. They're not walkie branded. They are folding, so you push them in and lift up. And that's pretty sweet. That actually looks really cool. Yeah. My issue with these, and if you've seen any of my videos, you know, they're just, they're a little bit small for me. Um, I would have to measure them up with some of the older pedals. I want to say these are a little bit bigger. They have a little bit more grip. These might actually be worth a damn. Hmm. And this says left. This is left. And we're going to go left. Anthony says that these are the same. Okay. Does he like them? These actually look a little bit bigger than the old ones. And, uh, well, we're going to have to wait like a minute for that response. Oh, oh, I just kind of went with all the default settings, guys. Um, again, I'm not very good at live streaming. So, yeah, I think it's set to where you have to wait a minute. Yeah. That's kind of lame. Sorry about that. Okay. So, obviously, on the left side, you're going to go. Lefty tidy on the right side, you can go righty tidy. And it's got some pretty cool reflectors in here. That'd be really sweet if they uh, put some light up pedals in these boxes or offered some. I know that there's some aftermarket ones and they're not cheap. <laughs> like the cheapest ones that I thought were even worth messing with, we're in like the $80, $90 range. Well, I think we got a response. Anthony, Anthony said that he replaced the pedals as soon as you got them. Yeah. Cool. And uh, every single one of these bikes, um, I go with the Ride uh, Race Face pedals. I really like them. You know, they're only 40 bucks a set. They're got enough grip to uh, make you feel like you have a really good perch, but they don't tear up your shoes. And uh, chromoly axles. All right, so we are removing the little fork keeper, which means we're ready to put on that. Colton oh, yeah. asks, are there, are, the turn si are there turn signals on the back? There are not turn signals on these bikes. There is a functioning brake light. And I want to say that on this model, uh, when you turn the bike on, your headlight and tail lights are automatically on. On the other bikes, you actually have to turn them on if you want them on. Um, really great responsive uh, brake light though. But no, man, you're, uh, you're waving at folks. <laughs> you're getting signals. That would be pretty cool if they did uh, turn signals on the pedals. That'd be kind of interesting. Um, it's getting cold out, and I'm going to be busting out my riding gloves here soon. And I've actually got some uh, heated riding gloves, and they have little red lights on the back. And uh, I kind of use them like a signal. Like when I go out like that, you see that, that red on the back of my glove? So that's something kind of cool. Okay, so this front axle has a lot of play. Um, kind of goes back and forth for you. Really cool axle nuts, though. They're uh, like elongated eight acorn nuts. So you're not going to have any exposed threads once you crank all these down. Um, there are some really long spacers. Anthony says... I put some aftermarket turn signals on my bike. It might be something I can't read there. Bro, I would love if you would um, hit my hit up my email and send me some pictures of all the cool stuff you've done to your bike. Because I actually want to do another customer appreciation, customer appreciation, uh, subscriber appreciation video uh, showcasing y'all's bikes. I think that would be awesome. Because so many folks send me comments about all this cool stuff they're doing to their bikes. I don't know why I'm trying to do it this way. Hey, bro, why don't you grab this wheel? 
and I'm going to lift up the bike and you're going to slide it right under there for me, okay? okay? So we need these washers all the way out and then these spacers all the way in. This can be a little tricky because this axle moves around. That's kind of... Seems strange. It's kind of bumming me out a little bit, actually. So let's see if we can do that. Good. Roll it right up over there. And you see how the slots need to connect? We need to get that caliper lined up. You see it? And there you go. Oh, you just push it down. Perfect. Good job. All right, we just need to line it up on this side now. Yeah, I'm guessing that's yeah, something that uh, just goes along with mags is the fact that this axle moves on you. It'd probably be easiest just to take the nuts all the way off. I gotta do everything the hard way. All right, putting that hard. And uh, oh, another thing, guys, when you get one of these bikes, um, really go out of your way not to grab the brakes like I did. Because <laughs> um, if you uh, fill the reservoir full of fluid without the uh, caliper in there, it can cause problems. All right, I'll do two minutes this time. Anthony says, okay, I can do that while not done adding things. And Colton says, is there a USB-C port on the display? There absolutely is. USB D US B C USB C USB C <laughs> Can you see that? Right there. And it has a little rubber grommet. And knowing me, if I dig that rubber grommet on and off too many times, it's probably gonna pop off. But yeah, plug in right there. Um I am not seeing a phone case with this bike or a phone holder. All these other bikes came with a phone holder. This one did not, evidently. It's sad. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's a good phone holder. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think I'd rather get something a little bit more suited to my phone. Because um, mine's, you know, it's huge. It's like a pocket computer. <laughs> okay. Now... I have to get this box out of the way because I'm already seeing longer travel, I think, on these front forks. I could be wrong. I have to get this box out of the way. All right, our rear seat, which I probably won't have on here too long because I will stick a box on it or something. And that just keys on there. What do you think, man? Put some rear pegs on here and you can go for a ride. That'd be so cool. All right. So there she is. On your ones, it's like, so I try and run it. I cannot touch the ground like at all. You can see right here. It's just not sitting. Wait, I think the shortest that it's rated for is five, six, something like that. So that's with the seat all the way down. I have a 32 inch inseam and my feet are planted. And obviously I'm gonna run it a lot taller than that because I like my legs to be all the way stretched out. I'm cranking. Oh man, oh that suspension has much longer. Whoa, that feels great. That's crazy. Yeah, right there. so you do have a lockout and then a preload adjustment here. Absolutely awesome. Now, let's see what happens when we try to power it on. Nothing. I do believe we actually have to activate it with the key. You do got a little bit of tape on it. Not like... Oh, yeah. There's going to be little bits of tape and zip tie all over this thing, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess use it. All right. So, speaking of zip tie, what did I do with them wire cutters? Do you see them? Here they are. There. I thought you put them like with that bottle phone. Now a normal person would look in the instructions and see what it takes to turn this thing on. But I'm just gonna stick the key in and see what happens. Yeah, there are indicators on here. Ignition. Holy crap, that's cool. Colton asks, 
How is their rear suspension? How is what? How is their rear suspension? The rear suspension felt pretty good too. There's a lot of tire play, so it's kind of hard to feel it. Um, in my opinion, with that other bike, uh, the rear suspension and the front suspension was a little bit stiff for me. The step through was softer all the way around, um, but it's uh, it's supposed to be a little bit stiffer because they're expecting you to haul stuff on here. It's really just supposed to be kind of a workhorse. All right, so I have zero idea how to turn the bike on. You think that the cube would like go on a handle or something? You would think, huh? Yeah. And it might not even be charged. Okay, so that's Is it that normally way. charged? <laughs> they sent me a broke bike. But Anthony knows. Yep, I have zero idea how to turn this bike on. From a it looks like it. <laughs> right? Zero ideas. Okay, our motor is plugged in all the way, no problem. Yeah, I'm uh, thinking that this battery might need to charge it too. So that's kind of a bummer. Colton says, manual, bro. What did he say? Manual, bro. Manual. Yeah, man, it's still a bike, right? It'll still go. The range on these is infinite. You just got to pedal. And there's no kind of uh, indicator as far as what the battery's doing. So we got to charge that. So um, my next review video, I'll kick it all on and run through all that for you guys. I am interested in... The folding mode stuff. Let's crack this thing in half and see how it does. Yo, we got our answer. Anthony says the battery does not come charged. That's the problem. <laughs> There's a problem. Okay, so usually I like to be on this side of the bike when I fold it. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. For some reason, I thought it folded the other way. Yeah, and that is hollow. And guess what, guys? If I want to put a second battery in here, I will actually need the guts to do so. There is no connection. So, yeah. Um, if I want to actually boost this to the next level and get a down tube battery in there, it's going to require the inputs here. And I'm assuming it might actually need another regulator. So that's interesting. So I'm going to get on the horn with Walkie and find out what it's going to take to take this bike to the next level. Because uh, I've got a down tube battery. I actually had it over here charged and ready to go. <laughs> I was going to cram it in there and just instantly get us going. And guess what? These are not interchangeable. Yeah. That's a bummer. That's I really thought the old H6 battery would drop right up in there. So, um, but man, you know, 40 amp hours. These bikes are 35 amp hour, and I never got neither one of them to even 50%. You know, by the time I get down to 50% in a day, I'm, I'm done for the day. So... All right, double round. Colton says the extra battery comes with all the connections, and Anthony says the the guts comes with the H6 Max down to battery. Okay, so that'd be why they're a little bit pricey too. So that's kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna roll this out of the way for a second, guys, and get this box out of the way. Because I'd really like to see these forks up against the old one. Because there is something wildly different happening here. That's okay, man. I'm just going to close this up and slide it out of the way. Okay. Okay. 
It's called Walkie Eight Six Dual Battery. The speaker's on the floor. <laughs> what did I tell you about leaving your body parts all over, boy? All right. Okay, so <laughs> these bikes are all going to be Halloween props in our haunted house. Our oh, skeletons wow, riding really and stuff. Cool. So check it out, man. Check out these forks. Can you guys see that? Can you see the travel? There's a crazy amount of travel on this bike. And then he says, I mean, like, twice says as much. It, it costs six twenty US dollars. Six hundred and twenty dollars to get that second battery. But like I was saying, um. 40 amp hours back here is nothing to sneeze at, and I actually enjoyed riding that bike without the front tube battery quite a bit. Actually, when I would go off-roading, I would take that front tube battery out of it, just run with the 20 uh, amp hour and back, just because it makes it so much lighter, especially when you're taking it somewhere, just not to have to crack the bike open, get that battery out there to make it lighter. So not having a battery up here is, you know, is what it is, especially at this price point. At this price point, for all these goodies, an app, twist throttle, um, they did downgrade from the uh, the cassette eight gear uh, hub to a seven speed freewheel. And you've got this job, which is kind of, it just, I've never been a big fan of these. It just feels kind of chintzy to me. I really like this trigger action. Is that supposed it's, to be a belt? I can't really see it. No, it's a shifter. Oh. I really like this. It's down. It's out of the way. But when you ride, these triggers kind of poke you in the finger. This one is completely out of the way. There's nothing bothering you. So oh, I think I'll get used to that. It just it feels a little it feels a little janky, but I'll get used to it, I guess. Um, and then you've got your push button horn here, so your horn's been moved to the right, your throttle's been moved to the right, instead of this large kind of gaudy metal uh, keypad, you've got a more rubberized one. I think this is going to do better in the weather. Um, this one, whenever I would go riding in like the upper 28s like it was this morning, um, if it freezes overnight, when I come out in the morning, I've got to hold that button for a second and like let the juice kind of trickle through. Sometimes it takes a minute to get this one started. I've got a feeling this one's going to be a little bit more responsive. I think we should move up. Yeah. I can't really see a lot right now. Well, guys, I think that's all I can really talk about. Well, let's look at this uh, chain ring real quick. Well, that was a lot lighter without that battery in it. Looks like it. <laughs> this is a much nicer chain ring. Can you guys see that? That is really cool. Let me get a closer look at it myself. So I had issues with uh, the other chain rings um, just because they would start ghost pedaling on me at like 23 miles an hour. Uh, that bike, the uh, old H6 came with a 52 tooth chain ring. The step through came with a 48, upgraded that to a 58, upgraded the old H6 to a 60 tooth, I think. And the problem there was um, when you go to an aftermarket chain ring, you don't have that guard anymore and you catch a bunch of slop from the derailleur and your chain's going to want to pop off. So you have to do a lot of tuning down here to really line that thing up and make sure it stays in. I do have a guy that's going to see and see me one for the 60 tooth chain ring. Uh, I got to get with him. Been a little busy, but this one, um, I thought it was a one piece from the pictures. It is not. Um, it is 
it's looking like a 52 tube and it actually has a plastic guard clipped to it that goes all the way around it. So you've got the guard on both sides. So that's really going to keep that sucker in there. That's kind of cool. It looks cool. Um, I wish that was aluminum. Uh, but then again, it might, might not rattle as much. I'll have to ride it to find out. Um, pro wheel cranks. So they're not the walkie branded cranks that I got on the X3 Pro. And uh, we've gone to a cassette back here. And I want to say this is a Shimano Tourney. Um, Quality-wise, probably about the same as those. There's a lot of flex on here, uh, a lot of give. So, um, you know, it's just, it's really going to go where it needs to go. But, um, you know, that's, that's some low-hanging fruit there. <laughs> and I have crushed mine a couple of times. I'm actually considering totally removing the gearing from uh, the my old H6, especially now that I have this one. I can totally jerk with that. Much heavier mags on the front and uh, back than we do in the front. They're a lot beefier, obviously. That's where we got our hub motor. And it's all just so super slick. Man, I really think that's all I can say about this bike so far until I can get to riding it. So I think I'm going to let y'all go for tonight. I really appreciate y'all coming by and checking us out. And uh, we got to get all these Halloween decorations into the haunted house now. I've been hoarding them. We actually do have one more thing. What's that? All right, we got a new commenter, Curtis Salter. And he says, I'm from Canada and bought the H6 Max and going to pick it up next month. Could you show off the screen and the navigation? I would love to. Actually, I'm going to do that. I've got to get the battery charged. Unfortunately, the battery isn't charged, so I've got to get that charged before I can turn it on. And I had a down tube battery that I was going to cram in there and just fire it up. But the down tube battery from the old H6 does not fit in this. Therefore, I do not have power on this bike yet. So I'm going to charge this battery overnight and uh, get our haunted house set up. And I will be doing a proper review video, a nicely edited video um, with all the screen, all the navigation, the app, all the bells and whistles. And we're going to see how fast we can get this thing going, how long we can go on it, and uh, whether or not it is truly an upgrade from the old bike. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> but, you know, i got to be uh, – I've got to set myself aside and, you know, be skeptical as a review guy. we got three right now. Matt Mosca, new commenter. Thank you for all your content. Curtis, no Thanks, problem. Bro. Looking forward to the Appreciate video. you, man. Colton, when will that drop? Uh, I've got to set up our haunted house. So we've got Halloween Tuesday night. That's a really big deal around here. I'm the haunted house guy in the neighborhood. I'm the Halloween guy. So I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to be shooting video of uh, my commutes on this bike. I'm going to go ahead and start commuting on it. I have a 60 mile a day commute to work. Um, that's how I avoid parking tickets. So I'll be recording all that, and I would be willing to bet I'm going to get as much footage as I need to uh, get that kicking over by um, a week from today, next Sunday. Um, if not, I'll throw out little shorts or something like that. I'll tell you what, man, I am. I'm, as soon as I get this thing fired up in the morning, I'm going to do a quick short of the screen and uh, throw that up here for y'all. Um, and... If you're just coming into this unboxing, I am going to download it when it lets me, and I'll edit it down so you can rewatch the unboxing and how we put it together. Uh, the bike comes 85% put together. All you have to do is put on the wheel and hand bars, and you're pretty much good to go. Throw the battery on the charger, and within about six hours, you should be cruising. So I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that yada. Uh, on most of my videos, you could slug the bug. <laughs> Come back by and check me out. I really appreciate y'all. I'll see you next week. I'd like to point it. out that my family thinks so much of house is awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad. Cheers, guys. There we go.